We built this to help our own business. What did we want in the software that's not out there? Yeah, I think when we were building it, like we wanted to reduce like the friction of people getting started. The ability for people to target very, very specific land, good land. Our, our community is what drives the decisions. I don't sit here in front of my whiteboard in my office and say, what are we doing next? We need to leverage the users. Your guys' emails, your guys' Discord messages, everything's documented. When we start seeing consistent things, boom, done next week. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Real Estate Investing Podcast. Today's topic, we're talking about building and scaling the land portal, where we're going, our purpose for building it, different updates, what we're seeing from the community, what kind of deals people are getting. We're gonna talk all things the land portal here. It's been a while since we gave everyone an update on this round. Yeah, excited to get into this. I know you and the developers have been working hard uh, and I think it shows in the quality of kind of the improvements over the last, I mean, it's crazy looking back. Like we started this thing we did our beta in like March, which was insanely far behind where we are today. And we probably started creating it like a year ago. Do you know when we started creating it, building it a year, probably can't be much more than a year. Uh, it was more than a year, but yeah. Yeah. But, um, just, just how far it's come and the reason and the value it's bringing the, the best thing about this and why it does well, uh, is because the value it brings to land investors, to people who are looking to do land deals. And there's so many house people that are coming it's, in now too. It's wild because we barely do any marketing. The way this business, we I've never had a business explode like the land portal's exploding, period. Like the way this business is just taken off and be, quickly becoming our biggest business we've ever had is because of the value it's bringing. We, our, our marketing spend to our total revenue is so minimal. We're like, we do emails, people come in, we get so many customers every day, but it's because uh, the value it's bringing. And that's what we're going to talk about. Like, what are we doing here? Uh, and what should people be doing in some use cases as well to help better their business? Because we built this to help our own business. Like what, what did we, what did we want in the software that's not out there? And we work from there and we're so deep in the land industry and we know everyone coming in the land investing online community and what their struggles are, what they want to see. And we're, we're doing a lot of things that no one else has done, but also making things that other people do a lot better as well. And if you guys haven't um, checked it out, there's a free 50, 14 day trial, but I, uh, there's also a lot of people who joined early on in the beta or a long time ago and never came back because the beta, there's bugs. There wasn't, we didn't have the proprietary stuff which is fine. We needed the beta for a reason to get rid of all those bugs and, and continue to improve. But um, make sure to check that out if you guys haven't. Wow, it is impressive tool now. Yeah, I think when we were building it, like we wanted to reduce like the friction of people getting started. I think that's kind of the, obviously helping them, but like uh, with like just having a better data set, but reducing the friction. And that's why some of these filtering things that are nowhere else in the entire world that you can't do, you cannot filter landlocked properties uh, for free anywhere else. Um, there's other softwares that upsell, like removing landlocked property, stuff like that. But as far as we well, can't target road frontage, you can't target road frontage, the ability for people to target very, very specific land, good land. And that's what we were talking about last night on the car. Like, my goodness, every single deal we're reviewing on our, uh, deal review. Do you was remember what it used land. to look like? Yeah. It used to be landlocked, wet, and all these properties you can eliminate before you even pay for a dime of the data. Um, and I think that's the most powerful thing with this tool. It is a data provider and we're very passionate about this. You can probably hear it when we're talking this is a data provider for land investors, uh, particularly that is nowhere else in the world that has what we have. And it's so specific for what we're trying to do. Yeah, and our mission in general as a company, not even the land portal, is just creating freedom. That's why we have land investing online. Like there's nothing more fulfilling than people coming in and getting land deals and being able to quit their job or being able to retire their family or being able to have their wife stay at home or or homeschool their kids. Everyone's freedom looks different, but that's our mission as a company is just creating more freedom for people, whether it's financial freedom or just freedom to work for yourself or whatever that looks like. Um, it's and more attainable now with like the uh, Exactly. Ability. It makes it more efficient. Yeah. And it, and you can do it with less now. And in one spot, it just makes it, you have a more efficient business, which is works directly towards that creative freedom. Um, but there's so many things in the future that we're going to add on the land portal and so many things now it's like, oh my gosh, if we had this in the past when we first started, like think of where we came from with our data sources. Mm -hmm. I, I like it's first off, you can now Ron and I are in our business have the ability to attack subdivides by targeting road frontage 
and getting very specific, you know, no wet, we don't want any wetlands on the subdivides. We don't want any road front, or we want this much road frontage, 2000 feet plus it needs to be 50 acres. Um, and then you have all the other advanced filters you can work with. But I remember doing one-on-one -on -one coaching probably 18 months ago before any of this. And I remember teaching people how to target subdivides and it was literally pulling up data tree and going through on the map and unchecking things. Now it's like the click of the button. I want over 500 feet of road frontage and you have all the properties with 500 feet of road frontage and like the immediacy um, of all that data, that information is what is so powerful. Exactly. And, and someone's like, when you're breaking this down to, so the data source we, we came from, and we've tried a lot of them. I mean, there's tons of data sources out there. You got the whole core logic crew, you got the whole data tree crew, you got the whole prop stream. Um, you got, and, and yes, if you want to go get unlimited data at land vision for $10,000 a year, or whatever, $5,000 a year, that's good. But you got to realize you got to be doing $20,000 or 20,000 mailers or data points a month for that to make sense. But they the, think of the cost here. So we're talking about creating freedom and efficiency of a business, making your business more efficient here. Last night on our webinar, we had a list without any of the uh, proprietary filters, no wetlands, just uh, an old list like we'd pull from our old services with just, you know, okay, we want it to be vacant land between this acres and this acres. And... Um, anything else that we had there? I think it was two to hundred acres. Two to hundred acre vacant land. Some random county vacant. Yeah, some exactly. random county. And we had seven. We had seven thousand four hundred forty-four. Everyone's like, "Hey, I'm I'm on a twelve-month contract with X and X and getting it for five cents. Um, you guys are six cents. Whatever it is, but I'm going to do some math for you here. And uh, we had seven thousand four hundred forty-four on that list. That's how we would have been pooling at any of those places I I mentioned before which is going to cost X amount of dollars uh, for data, but more importantly for mail and marketing in your time. So we put in then after that 700, 7,400, we put in wetlands, maybe FEMA. Um, you can put in slope here coming soon, but we put in wetlands landlocked. and landlocked, or I think we did 300 feet of road frontage or more yeah. is what we did. So we did 300. So we know every property. So it has road frontage. It's not going to be wet. And we know every property has 300 feet or more of road frontage. It's going to be really nice land. Mm -hmm. That got us down to 3,600 good data points. What does that do for you as a business? What's 3,600 times 0.65 mail? If you're sending mail. $2,300. So that saves you 3,600 of data, but also $2,500 of mail or 2,000, whatever it is. But even more important than that, every call you get now, you know is going to be good land. You're not wasting your time. Your salespeople or your answering service, all the costs that trickle from sending mail. You, you don't have salespeople on the phone now, or you're not on the phone with bad leads where you need to check and double check and see if it's sloped or see if it's wet. All these different things no longer exist. Your business just doubled in efficiency. And it's the most overlooked thing I can think of. Like you saving two cents, one cent on data to not have it targeted is mind blowing. Like in terms of just efficiency of your business, data is everything trickles after your data. The amount of calls you get, uh, the quality of properties, everything trickles from there. And that's where you start. I mean, honestly, we're extremely underpriced when you look at it like that. And like what Daniel was saying is we had 7,500 pieces of data that ev every other data provider in the world would say 7,500 pieces of data for this county for this. What we got rid of is wetland property. We don't want those. Those are bad land. We got rid of properties with less than 300 feet of road frontage. We got rid So that is uh, getting rid of those. And then we had this list. It cut down 3,600 properties that are essentially bad properties that we don't want to target anyways. And we're left with this list of 3,800 pieces of good land. That's what, something we've always said is how do you target good land? And it's so easy with this. And that 3,600 that we got rid of, you don't have to mail. You don't have to answer the phone. Those are the most phone calls you're going to get is people who have bad land. Those are who reach out to you the fir first time. Like maybe you'll get less calls, but it's BS responses of people with bad land who just want to sell because they have bad land. Now you don't have to worry about any of those leads and you're efficiency is just, I, that's what I'm focused on is efficiency. How we, how do we help people become more efficient? This is how. Yeah. And another big question I want to address here is where does our data come from? Uh, and, and also where do we get these points? Like how do, how does the AI know there's no structures? That's another thing with data providers. We have an AI button that removes structures. Yes. It's not there right now, <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be back in a week. Um, it's already finished. But uh, and it's been finished and it worked really well. We just when we we just uploaded a whole new database and merged and that was the most 
uh, took up the most space. So it just took a long time for it to generate. And we decided to push forward without it because we know we could still have good, good um, solutions for removing it. But we have AI to remove the structures also. So it scans it on multiple maps, not our maps. It scans on external maps, knows if there's a structure on it, cross checks it with the county data saying, does it have building square feet on it? Checks it again, does all this different stuff. Um, and it's AI. And a lot of our stuff's AI, the road frontage, all that. So uh, it's just, everyone asks where we get this data from. It's just all proprietary. And they ask, so we aggregate our own data as well, is what I'm trying to say. So where does our data come from? We, we get a ton of our own data. You know, when you talk about a lot of our data points that are 100% filled out, some of the best data we have comes from ourselves. And then you also have five to 10, probably closer to 10 to 15 now. We have 10 to 15 different data providers. I mean, we have MLS data coming in from a data provider. We have county assessors data. We have geographic data coming from another spot, uh, zoning data. Um, and the list keeps growing and growing. And then we have the skip trace data. There's so many different providers we get it from. Uh, but I will say one of the most, I don't want to say overlooked, it's under or it is overlooked, it's not important, but people think it's really important, is where the data comes from in general, the assessor's data. Guys, assessor's data is assessor's data. I've looked at Black Knight, Data Tree, CoreLogic, uh, Regrid, Atom, mm -hmm. you, the list goes on. The data itself from the assessors, they all share it with each other. So if you guys are listening to this and you're like, where does it come from, all that stuff, all of that's similar. I cross-check the heck out of it. It's gonna, you're gonna, some areas are good with this and some are good with this source. Um, but a lot of the assessors data they share. So we combine a lot of our own data, multiple data points from different providers, aggregate our own to make the best solution. That's what we did. We're not data tree. We're not core logic. We're not Atom. We're a combination pulling it in to have the most filled out data in the world. And I think those custom data points that you're talking about that were aggregate, like you use data points from each place and then you can create your own data as well with those other columns, uh, proprietary col columns that we've made. Um, I know you talked about it last night, Dan, on our call, talk about how this has come to be as far as this, because you you touch base like this is our users. This is our students who have essentially made this software what it is. Like not our students, our users. Our users, sorry. It's not our uh, students, it's but our users. Some of them are students. But yeah. uh yeah, the the land portal users who the feedback from them, how valuable that is on a day-to-day -day basis. Um and you talk touch base on that a little bit. Yeah, our community, yeah, that's a really good point, actually, because we haven't touched. But our, our community is what drives the decisions. I don't sit here in front of my whiteboard in my office and say, what are we doing next? What do I, you know, that's how we built it first was like, what do what do we need to see? Because we knew what we needed was what the community. But then once we get to a certain level, it's like we need to leverage the users. That's why we came out with the beta. Your guys' emails, your guys, I see almost every single one of those emails you're sending to support. Your guys' emails, your guys' Discord messages, everything's documented. And we see when we start seeing consistent things, like, oh, let's get this. Let's improve it. Boom. Done next week. We have a big team of developers. This isn't some raggedy business where we're working in our basements building a software. We got a team of seven full-time people on this. Um, we have a machine learning team. We have a data team. We have a back-end data cloud team, you know, that manage the the organization of all the data in, uh, in the cloud. We have a bunch of different things going on. So when when your guys' uh, feedback's consistent, I kind of prioritize it. Not to say feedback's good or bad, but like when there's high priority feedback that 20 of you sent me, all right, we got to get this done. This is queued in next project. Boom, next week it's done. Sometimes maybe one or two said this, I think it's a good idea too. You get a little backlog, but it's still in there. So the, the community literally dictates the the where this software goes and for big projects so that one of the big projects we projects we have right now is a slope tool no not showing you how much of the land slope is sloped in this percentage and this this is going to be an ai tool it takes the parcel it gives you spits you out a pdf and it shows yes the generic things but it shows you where you can build uh the how what what this cluster of flat land looks like how how that's shaped and how much slopes on that and that came from the community all these do the mls uh we, we're getting MLS data that came from the community. We're going to have a tool where you can analyze comps on a map and export the comps and all that stuff directly linked to our map. This is coming from the community. That's the community makes every decision. Yeah. I, it, it's been so valuable. And there's some people that like, it's just the value they bring as far as just insight. They're heavy, heavy users of the software. They see a lot of value and they also, 
I think they understand like the development from our end is never done. Like this is not. That's like, what it was. Yeah, that's the thing I didn't know about <laughs> about yeah. software is how much is ongoing. Yeah, like it's it's never done. Like, are there going to be months where we spend X dollars and months where we spend half of X dollars? Um, absolutely. But like continually to improve something like this to make it software is always going to like if people stop working on Instagram or something, it will collapse within a week. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the coolest thing is there's always somewhere else we can go. Um, sometimes it's just going to be maintenance stuff and just improving maintenance stuff. Um, other times UI stuff where it's the interface, maybe it's an app or something like that. There's always things that we can improve and that I think that's one of our kind of focuses for sure going forward. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about the functionality of it yesterday. For those who don't know as much about the Lamport, like what, what does it do? What does it do for land investors? Number one, it's a data source to get your data. And that's about using the right filters, land-specific filter, filters, and getting your data uh, from one spot, saving you mo money and creating efficiencies. Another big use for it is the mapping. People love the map. There's there's overlays. There's all kinds of things for it. You can analyze land. You can draw out parcels and uh, subdivides and look at your contour lines and 3D map and all that good stuff too. Another one, skip tracing. Skip tracing's actually gotten really, really big in terms of um, uh a user's using it because one, it's five cents to skip trace on there. Number two, it combines it with its export list to keep it really clean. Um, number three, it's really good skip tracing and a lot of different reasons. So skip tracing would blew my mind with how much that's growing. Uh, what's the other use case? Um, I mean, you can mapping. We said mapping too. You yeah. said mapping. Um, neighbor letters, just other neighbor letters, like, things like that. People yeah. are using it for. There's so many different creative MLS ways. MLS comping land soon. There's so many different ways people are creatively using it. And that's what I like. And you tell me about the heat map and what people are using. I'm like, wow, I had no clue people are using that. Um, so there's different things. There's drawing tools within the map. Um, something I had to say, Dan, it's a. Uh, this was not like something we planned on doing two years ago. It was just a gap in the market, right? That we kind of just saw, and I we're very. Uh, analytical, I think, when we put a lot of time into something. It's not like we're just like throwing stuff at the wall. Like we were trying to build the best software for this. Well, um, this, it didn't start as that. It started as let's create a little... For our students more so. Yeah, for our students, let's just create a portal they can go into and, and get comps out. And then you started realizing like, wow, we can give them a lot more with just putting this. Then we started adding things. And we're like, no, we can't be an API. We got to uh, bring all of our data from multiple sources in-house. And then we're like, oh, let's put a map on here. And then all, all of a sudden you're like, holy crap, this is a full-blown tech company. Let's build this out and hire seven people. Um, and it was just one step in front of – we didn't have a – this was not planned at all. No. You talked to me two years ago. I had no idea about this. Yeah. Which it's is a crazy. big part of like what we're doing, the value we're providing. Um, obviously, with Land Investing Online, we can students can go right over and use the data source that we're very specific in how we teach. But we have a ton of YouTube content as well. Um, the other week on a YouTube Live from a Wednesday YouTube Live, if you guys are watching on YouTube, uh, we did top five use cases or uh, ways people are using the land portal. So that's definitely a valuable one. Yeah, and I think if you guys are have used the land portal and you guys have suggestions for future use too, like if you guys are listening on YouTube, make sure to comment about that or just message me in Discord, whatever. Like I said, I look at most of the emails too, almost every single one. We got a customer support team, but I go through them with them and help them um, just because I think the people that come on are quickly shocked at how quick we change things. Mm -hmm. um, so there's constantly updates and things like that. We just had a big UI and data override and user interface, and it looks good now and clean. And we're like the future guys, what I'm saying now in a month is going to be completely different just because we're going to have this, all what we talked about implemented with the slope and everything. And we're going to be onto the next big things too. So just stick with us and watch what we're about to do. What's your mindset with like big changes and stuff? Because some people with tech changes, they're like, crap, I used to like the way it worked and everything like that. And um, I think with changes, sometimes there can be some frustration, but I know everything we're doing is for the better. What's your kind of thoughts on that though? Like In big terms of people? Yeah, like big data change or something like that, which I don't think we're going to have as big of a change as we had um, anytime soon. Yeah, that was a tough one, especially because certain people had a bunch of saved lists and they were deleted and people's hard work went away. But, you know, that's just going to happen for the better. So it's not going to happen again like that. But, you know, change happens and we're doing it for the better. And you guys got to realize, too, some of our old users would get frustrated. And this is why also we do it. We do it to expand and create the better, a better industry for it. And some of the old the guys who are there from day one get frustrated. They had their saved list to completely understand. But it also sparked, you know, a bunch of new users that can come explore the land portal now, too, and use it for their business to make it more efficient, too. So, yes, a, a couple of people get frustrated with the changes, but we also just got a thousand more students because in, in a day because yeah. of a change. And that's kind of how we see it with any change I do. Road frontage, boom, 
spikes users. Uh, FEMA and wetlands boo, spikes with users. Slope projects spikes. MLS project and like the more we're helping. And we know we're moving in the right direction when we see those spikes. If we don't see a spike, we're like, oh, maybe people don't value that as much as we originally thought. Let's see what the community thinks. And we always go back to what people want and feedback surveys and just inquiries on the emails. Exactly. Like Dan said, guys, if you guys are interested, that we'll put a 14-day free trial in the description. If you guys have questions, reach out to Dan in Discord. He's extremely responsive with this stuff. Um, other than that, guys, if you watch on YouTube, hit the subscribe button below. Apple or Spotify, leave us a review, share it with a friend, put it on your Instagram story. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining, guys. As always, thank you for joining. Please do us a huge favor and like and subscribe our YouTube channel and share this with a friend. It really means the world to Ron and I, but more importantly, it could help change the life of someone else. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next episode.